All right, these are, these are the things I'm going to talk about. I'm talking from a boots on the ground perspective. Um, I guess I should, have been, I should have changed the enforcement strategies with the challenges to give you more of a sense of hope, but we're going to do them in this order, and um, we'll see how it goes. So you've heard of a lot of plans from people, and the first thing you should do is make a plan. Uh, these are really easy questions to ask and very difficult to answer. Unfortunately, Annabelle doesn't have an algorithm to measure uh, what the problem is or where it's coming from, and so you have to basically focus on what's materially impacting your business, get whatever budget you can get and focus on that, and then learn to live with or adapt to the things you really can't do anything about. And a lot of that, as we'll see, is driven by social media. Uh, once you set up your plan, uh, you need to execute it. And the first and most important thing is getting the money you can get. And that probably lives somewhere between what Jan was saying from the CEO screaming to the CFO saying, what's our ROI? So ideally, that would be a good, good place to start. But what's most successful is when people cross-functionally coordinate. And that would be marketing, IT, and law, all, legal, all working together. So the companies that do that, they seem to be the most successful, as opposed to the companies where the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Um, we've been asked to investigate a lot more times than you think uh, from companies who call us very upset, saying, we found this company. They are using our look and feel of our products. They're selling our products, and they're brazenly selling them in this public manner, and we want you to stop them. And so we'll investigate them and report back. We, we met the enemy. We talked to the enemy, and the enemy is you. You've hired us to investigate your own company. So not a great thing to happen. The other thing that happens is people ask us to tell them what they own in terms of a domain portfolio. And you can see how that would happen with acquisitions and not keeping track of what's going on. Uh, ideally, you want to be proactive and reactive, but sometimes budget will only allow you or business model will only allow you to work a certain way. Again, you want to appropriate the allocate the appropriate resources. You want to monitor what's going on. Like the old song says, check in to see the condition your condition is in. Um, and that can be as something as simple as going on the internet and mimicking the consumer's uh, path to your products and see if they're being diverted. Um, a lot of things that we do are covert. And as Jan said, you want to do overt actions as well, make noise. You can't rely on that to be your sole model of enforcement in a place like China. Uh, but it does tell people you're on the ground and you're out there and making arrests. And if you make it harder for them to steal your products, they'll move on to another company. Um, we, were talked about, we were asked to talk about the different uh, eras of enforcement strategy, old school versus uh, uh, current times. So I'm calling this the gumshoe era. Uh, we have always uh, at least since I've been in business for more than 20 years, had access to do discrete phone calls. Uh, it was easier back in the day because there was no caller ID. It was harder because you had to do this. That was harder. Uh, we've been able to get uh, addresses if we have a phone number or vice versa, and then get neighboring names and addresses and phone numbers. Uh, and I just want to let you know your, your neighbors are very willing to talk about you. They tell us a lot of things, so be careful what you tell them. We, we have traditionally gone into places, pretend to be shoppers, used our necktie cameras and our briefcase cameras to gather evidence and then turn that over to the people that have hired us. And then the internet happened, and a lot of the things that pay, people paid us to do went away because it, it came to their home. It was free. Uh, the world's information came in by th something called electronic mail. Uh, you could, th through this wonderful thing called a modem that operated at 14.4 megabits per second. And if, uh, if you haven't experienced such blazing speed, I, I will, for the younger people, I will translate for you, which is hashtag slow as sugar. Um, <laughs> there's who is records. You used to have one registry, and you could get accurate information. There was no proxy registries. And then the Wayback Machine. That's still in operation. That started in the late 90s. It's archive.org. They are collecting 
the, uh, his, creating for history the web pages of the world. It's up to 436 billion pages. It's a useful tool. It has some limitations, which I'll talk about later. But uh, these characters are, illustrate where they got that name. This is the bow tie wearing polymath and beagle, Mr. Peabody, and his adopted son, Sherman. And if you were not old enough to watch this on TV, you can now watch it on YouTube because my generation has digitized our childhood memories and uploaded them so you can share our nostalgia with us. Which brings us to modern times, postmodern synthesis is what I'm calling this, and it's largely driven by social media. Um, so what was us at one point subscribing to different databases is now us going on Twitter and Instagram and your Facebook timelines and getting information there. And as I told you, your neighbors like to talk about you. Well, they really like to talk about themselves. They are documenting that at every turn and saying in a very public manner, hey, I got it over on the man and uh, I'm selling prices for cheaper, selling things for cheaper and you can buy them here. Um, some things you can do, which I've put under the heading of trickery with online resources. I'm not going to give you all of our big secrets because we are competing with you now for getting information, so I'll give you a few tips, uh, some that are at your disposal. If you look at the top three search engines, which are Google and Bing and Yahoo, and use them all to search for something, you'll definitely get a lot of redundancy in the search, but you'll also get additional hits because they use different algorithms. You can take any one of those search engines and run them through three different browsers like Chrome, Safari, or Firefox and get additional information. Mm -hmm. There is something called jQuery, which is, I don't want to use a too technical term, but it's the little rectangle thingy at the bottom of the screen when your page loads. Basically, that's telling you what's going on as the page loads, and that will tell you what cookies, if it's being redirected, if it's coming from another country, that and oftentimes is the only way to tell what's a legitimate site and what a non-legitimate site is. Um, what was one of my other tips? Oh, YouTube. Go back to YouTube. If you click on the if you click on the links, or you hover over hover click on the advertisements, or hover over the broken links, or watch the digitized content all the way to the end you may get the producer of the film and not the person who actually is promoting it. So that's another lead and they will tell you where to go. Coordinating on ground assets for us is using the investigators worldwide that we have developed over 16 years or so. We're members of the World Association of Detectives and other licensed IP agencies and so rely on those people for on ground information in those countries. For you it could be actually crowdsourcing your own people if you use your sales force who is around the country or around the world, they're very interested in, in their commissions and they don't want anybody selling their product, your product in their territory, particularly if it's a counterfeit good. So if you set up some sort of system where they can report for you, that's a very cost effective way to um, monitor that. Uh, you do have to check in on them because sometimes they sell outside of their territories too, so be sure you do that. Uh, another thing is lever leveraging your client base. The best example I can give you about that is Starbucks. They have a very loyal customer base that likes certain kind of drinks and they really don't like it when their drink is served in another place. Uh, they don't like it when you take the brand and, and change it to something indecent and I really can't say what I've seen but I can tell you it rhymes with Starbucks. Um, some of the challenges we face in getting information, you heard a lot of things uh, from my other presenters. Uh, you saw in Guido's uh, slides all his family, all the devices they have. I have three devices. I'm sure a number of you have three devices. They're all mobile. They're all moving around. In fact, after this presentation, my plan is to go upstairs and hack into Philips and sell some TVs to pay for my trip. And then by the time they find me, I'll be gone. Um, Blackout search engine optimization. Luckily, the search engines uh, change their algorithms so that people can't game the system. Um, but there is content spinning and link wheeling where they're pretending with nonsensical text to create a false sense of leads going into a site and raising them higher up in the search engine. But with that, with that challenge comes opportunity. Um, 
when you're looking at a site, it can be, it look, it look like a legitimate site, but there'll be this one bar of text that's kind of nonsensical or it's, it's not, not really where it should be. And oftentimes if you put that bar of text in a search engine, you'll find all the sites that are using that because they've ripped each other off and either they have old information or you can find all the LinkedIn places where people are counterfeiting. There is also odd turns of phrase. We were, we were investigating a company that we thought was in Brooklyn based on information and a telephone number and we could never get them to answer the phone and when we went on site to the address we developed, there was nothing there. And then we used the jQuery thing to find out that this was uh, in actually the Philippines. And once you added the country code name to that, it helped us get there. But the thing that alerted us was they used the phrase, you know you work hard from eight to five, which is not what we say in America. We, you know, you've seen the Dolly Parton movie, it's, it's we work from nine to five. And by, uh, well, I'll translate really quick for the younger people, that would be hashtag slang fail. Um, <laughs> anyway, that was, a, that was a way to use what is essentially a challenge into a positive thing. Uh, proxy re registrations, you've heard about that. That's an issue in trying to get information. Privacy issues, data protection laws are different all over the world. And so that can, some, you can use your toolkit in some countries and not so much in other countries. Anonymity is the best tool we have in our toolbox. Being able to approach a company or an individual without telling them that we're approaching them or letting them know, tipping off that we're coming. As you probably know, when you go to a site, many things can be gathered about you and not just for sales purposes. They can tell what browser you're using, they can tell where you came from, how long you stayed to look at something, what you looked at, and possibly where you're going. So that, that, that makes it difficult to sneak up on people. There is a search engine, I don't know if you're aware of, it's called Tor, T-O-R. It was developed by the Naval Research Lab in a way to protect sensitive uh, government communications. It goes to what's called the deep web, which uh, some of the major search engines don't crawl because there's not much information, and if they do report it, it's really buried in the search results. But it does what's called, uh, it's called an onion with the idea it's different layers. So what it does is, is bounce among sites before it lands on the site. So it provides layers between you and the target and, and hopefully won't disclose who you are. This is the slide to show that no matter how, how much you cut up the internet, uh, each piece of it's enormous. And by re even trying to report it in real time, you're, it's always obsolete. This information, the source of this information is from We Are Social and it's from May, and I'm sure it's completely out of date now. Here's another uh, slide to show the popularity of social media, as if we didn't know that was true. One thing that I didn't know before this presentation is QZone. It's almost as popular as Facebook. It's a Chinese social networking site, obviously very popular. Um, they have something called QQ, which is like a uh, text messaging, Skyping, shopping sort of combination of things. Uh, when you sign up for that, they give you a number, and that number is sequential. So if I, if I signed up for a QQ number and then you signed up for one later, your number would be higher than mine. And we actually had a case in a patent case where uh, another party was claiming prior rights in a certain area, and their main source of evidence was this document uh, sales document that showed that they had made this purchase or developed this product before our client. Uh, and besides the date on the document and all the, the information of the agreement, in the signature was their QQ number. And the investigator was savvy enough to realize that that, that digit really didn't correspond, that size of number really didn't correspond to the date. And we were able through Chinese investigators to find the exact date when that particular QQ number was issued and it happened to be seven years after the document, so that went a long way to help our client. New GTLDs, uh, at the end of this year, we'll have 1,000 GTLD registries, um, and that's more than triple uh, the, the CCTLD registries, so that is a big uh, paradigm change. Uh, obviously, a lot of you now are experiencing the joy and pain of making the decision to be proactive or reactive and registering X number of brands and X number of registries. 
uh, I guess the poster child for that decision process is Dot Sucks. If you went to Inta in San Diego, you saw a very aggressive ad campaign that was successful in forcing people to make that decision. By the way, I got these GTLD slides from Cum Laude. I appreciate them letting me use them. Uh, some people have taken uh, a way to uh, help cut down on some things, up security, protect IP, and also to advertise their brands by buying a dot brand. The idea over time is that you will drive traffic and point customers to safe zones. They will know they're secure. They'll know they're getting the right company. They won't have to worry about being fished or whatever. Um, there are also some companies who have registered dot brand and have no idea what to do with it. There are people in legal departments on top of all the other stuff that they're doing now have to run a registry. So that will be very interesting. And so for all the hullabaloo and noise and issue, this is what we have. The new GTLDs with all the news they've made are only a sliver of what's going on on the internet. And this is the hierarchy of what's most popular. Now this may change, this, this, this chart may actually change, but if it follows historic patterns, um, whenever we've introduced new domain names into the system, we really haven't needed them. But we have enjoyed paying for them. If you're a brand owner and you have, you're active in the trademark clearinghouse and participating in sunrises and stuff, then you spent about a half a million dollars last year in protecting your brands with domain names and, and doing it again next year and years to come for the privilege of names that you probably will never use or at best case redirect. I really don't, we, we were told to cover this and I really don't know anything about the Internet of Things except to say that there are now, as far as I understand, more things connected to the Internet than there are people connected to the Internet. And that's going to obviously grow exponentially. And so it's hard to tell if this is going to be a challenge or an opportunity. Uh, one of the ways it might be an opportunity is we don't have to worry about domain names anymore. We don't go to the Internet. We have the Internet in our tennis shoes, in our clothes, in our tie, in our shirt, in our car. Um, so we're living in the Internet. We don't go somewhere. So we don't need an address. Uh, the downside, obviously, is you may end up taking an inanimate object to court because it's infringing your brand. So you never know how this is going to shake out. <laughs> In my last slide, um, we try to do things ethically. I suggest that if you hire someone or you do it yourself to, to follow that as well. It's really tempting knowing some of the resources that are out there to get the information quickly, but you want it to stand up in court if it goes that far. And uh, what we do is either take advice from our clients or from foreign counsel or from licensed PIs in those countries to help steer us in the right direction. And that's knock on wood, has worked out so far. Thank you for your time.